Welcome to Mitchell Field in Welcome to Mitchell Field in Uniondale, New York, Long Island, the home of the New York Cosmos. Tonight, it's National Independent Soccer Association action in week two, as the 1-0 Michigan Stars make the trip east to take on the New York Cosmos. And with that, welcome to our coverage. I'm Ralph Bednarczyk as we continue to be practicing social distancing during these pandemic times. I'm joined by Sal Rosamelia, former Columbia all-American goalkeeper down on the field. Uh, Sal, it's just an abbreviated four-game season in the fall. The winners will advance to play in a spring championship game when that portion of the season gets going. So everything is magnified for these two tonight. That's right. These two teams will only play four games like the rest of the team in their conference. Four games in the fall season, so every game is extremely vital, especially the home matches. Each team gets two games at home. For the Cosmos, it's an opportunity to jump the Michigan Stars, who won their opener over Chattanooga 2-1, to one. chance to get three points at the opener and establish themselves as the dominant team in this division. Clear and comfortable conditions. Soccer continues to be played as we move forward as a world through this pandemic. We've got New York Cosmos and Michigan Stars action coming up from the NISA in just a moment. Mediacom customers, thank you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us to keep your family connected. We'll do whatever it takes. Yep, we got you. Thank you so much for being patient and your support. You all are the reason that we do what we do and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. We appreciate you and please stay safe. Thank you for being a part of our Mediacom family. You're the best. Thank you. I set you free. I told you you could. So the New York Cosmos play the first of four games in this abbreviated four-game NISA schedule. The Michigan Stars here from just outside of Detroit. They are here playing game number two. Ralph Bidnarczyk alongside Sal Rosamelia. Let's introduce our starters tonight. Here from Michigan. So they'll play out of a 4-3-3 Chalbad. And Adu will be the left and right backs. Goni Bental and Devin Amu Mensa, the center backs. In the middle, the holding mid will be Abrams with Sebastian Dupre, still just 21 years old, and Brian Vang, a recent graduate from UW Green Bay out in the Midwest. The game winning goal in the last game, Steven Yunchai on the left, Cameron Schneider, the right forward, and Thomas Bernito will be up top on the 4 3 3. In goal, this is the two-year starter, 24 years old from Zimbabwe, Tatenda Mikuruva. Was all Great Lakes Conference in the NPSL and had a very good Members Cup last year, so he's one of the handful of returning Michigan Stars players. And tonight for the New York Cosmos, their lineup a little bit different, but very fluid. 3-4-3, three, three, so the three in the back with Matt Lewis, Conrad Pleva, and Emmanuel Sembroni. Then the four in the midfield, You'll see Galvao and especially the very talented Agoli on the left. Ansi Agoli, usually left back, will be left midfield. Danny Chatella, the captain of the team, as well inside with Vincenzo Candela. Darwin Espinal will kind of play like a number 10. And then Siobhan John Brown on the right and Bloody Bartic on the left. And it, once again in goal for the New York Cosmos, here's the 5'11", Jesse Cork from Valley Stream, New York, 27 years old, his second year with the franchise. And just looking to keep sharp, he's, he's been someone that has come along and battled Kevin Tenho consistently. 
former East Coast Conference Goalkeeper of the Year at nearby Division II Molloy College. How about the coaches? Well, there on the left is Alex Stremmel, a former 14-year player in the German Bundesliga. Comes over with a tremendous, tremendous resume. And also in the white shirt joining him is George Yunchai, the president and owner of this franchise. It's also Mr. Yunchai's birthday today, looking for a big win on the road in New York. And for the New York Cosmos, there's their former longtime center back, longtime center back with the New York Metro Stars, Carlos Mendes, in year number three, and looking to get things started, especially on home field here tonight, Sal. The Cosmos, three ties through their independent cup schedule, which was a precursor and a warm up to these four games. Two goals scored, two allowed. They had opportunities to frankly win all three games. They've came away, or really, really two of them, and they came away with nothing and that opportunity out of the three games they played. Yeah, you're right, Ralph. I mean, it was a disappointing result in both matches. They were up 1-0 in each match and gave up a, a late uh, tying goal uh, against New Amsterdam in their first game and then in their final game against Maryland Bo uh, Bobcats also up 1-0, up a man in that match as well for the majority of the game and uh, disappointingly did not finish that off. Uh, more importantly than the late goals they get up, I, uh, they gave up in each of those matches. I think it's important for them when they get up one nothing to get that second goal, to kind of bury the game, put it away. And that's one of the things Carlos uh, Mendez and I spoke about uh, uh, before the game is, you know, finding a way to, to finish it off, you know, be more clinical with their chances. They created enough in both of those Nisa Cup games uh, to really put the game away and not have it one nothing late in the match. And that's what uh, he's going to look for. It's such a short season. There's really no room for error. Four-game fall season as you're trying to battle for position uh, into the tournament. Uh, you really have to win your home games. You only get two of them. And tonight is huge, uh, huge for the Cosmos as Michigan comes in uh, already with three points, uh, one, uh, one game. They won against Chattanooga FC 2-1 uh, a week ago. So big game for the Cosmos. Our keepers have taken their positions. The Michigan Stars in the white on white, green on green for the New York Cosmos. Temperatures at opening kick around 78 degrees. And we expect this one to have calm skies for the duration. Five subs in these four regular season games, Sal. So that's down from where it was last week as through the independent cup. Coaches were given seven subs as players continue to get their legs after missing so much time due to the pandemic in the spring. Dombard Espinal. And a deep throw coming for New York. Yeah, I don't think the subs is going to be much of a concern for Michigan because they're only going to go maybe three deep anyway. Uh, you would think for the Cosmos, they've always been a team with, uh, with great depth, so they can go five, six, seven off the bench and really not drop in talent. And see a goalie and unique for the Cosmos tonight, Sal. Slightly different shape that Carlos Mendez has gone with three in the back. The people are kind of in their same spots, but how about the difference that is particularly for a terrific talent such as Ansia Goli that we just saw throw it in? Well, I, I like it. You know, most teams are going to play, especially when the Cosmos are playing at home, maybe with one forward up top, a 4-5-1 formation, no real reason to have four defenders. Three solid center backs, it gives Ansia Goli freedom, which he always has going up the left flank anyway. But now it gives somebody on the right side. Uh, we think Pedro Galvao today lining up on the right side uh, it wide in the midfield. It just gives the defensive team, the defensive players, more to worry about beside the forwards, beside Bardic, beside Espinal. Now you have guys coming from all over. And you try to draw them out. Teams like to sit in against the Cosmos, give possession in the middle third of the field. Now if you have these wide players getting up and down the flanks, those defensive players inside the box are going to have to come out and respect the likes of Ansi Agoli on the left side, and that might open up some spaces in the box, around the box, top of the box for some other dangerous players. And as we showed you the lineup for the Cosmos, the other unique thing is with essentially the two up top or the number 10 position that Darwin Espinal is playing, Cosmos playing without tonight, Isaac Acuna just came up 
with a bit of a hamstring yesterday during training. So as a precaution, Acuna is going to be out. He has one of the two Cosmos goals they've scored. And then we send our very best wishes out to the family of Ali Hassan. Hassan has essentially been the co-starting forward working with Isaac Acuna. Ali unfortunately lost his father earlier in the week and is down in Weston, Florida to be with his family. So, and of course, the New York Cosmos family and from all of us wish Ali Hassan well. The Stars got off to a great start last weekend against Chattanooga, getting a goal in the sixth minute from Kyle Newell, who is not in the starting lineup today, as Alex Stremmel, along with owner George Yunchai and assistant coach, decided to make that change. Matt Lewis to the feet of Galvao. And Newell, I believe, had the assist on the game-winning goal in the 88th minute from Steven Yunchai. So you have to wonder if there's something perhaps injury-wise, a little something that he picked up uh, during training since that match uh, that's causing him not to be in the lineup because uh, a goal and assist from Newell in the last match in their opener against Chattanooga, you would think he'd be in the lineup tonight. And the other talented player that we could see come off the bench, Alexander Sastru Stegui, a forward from Pamplona, Spain, that's had a terrific resume and had a dominant collegiate career here in the U.S. as a potential option. Tomas Bernito tried to lay it off, and instead it's a goalie with numbers running. A goalie, good ball, John Brown, Siobhan John Brown will get to it, and then chips it over the top. Mukuruva caught a little bit in between. What a fine ball played by a goalie. Well, it's a wonderful ball, as you mentioned, Ralph, from a goalie, but this first touch is absolutely perfect from Siobhan John Brown right into his own path. That was the much harder touch there, was bringing that down at full speed, out of the air, a 60-yard ball from a goalie. That was the hard part. The easy part should have been putting it in the back of the net. And jo Siobhan John Brown, unfortunately, didn't follow through on that one. But a wonderful first touch. Cosmos are going to have opportunities in and behind. When Michigan clears their lines, gets the ball in the offensive half of the field for them, they're going to be aggressive because we saw it. Tatenda right there, the goalkeeper, Mkorova. He likes to be way off his line. He's very confident with the ball at his feet. He'll play 30 yards outside the box and push his defenders up towards midfield, and that'll leave them susceptible to that ball over the top that we just saw from a goalie. And certainly, Siobhan John Brown has the pace to get behind, just like we saw there. Again, wonderful first touch, really. That was the harder part of that whole thing, and he handled it really nicely. Unfortunately, just missed the final touch over the bar. That's been the early theme for the New York Cosmos through their three games in the Independence Cup, as that is Vincenzo Candela. Shake it up momentarily, but the Cosmos only having scored a pair of goals and only one in the the run of play. It was a goalie that scored in a game you and I broadcast two weeks ago, Sal, up at the Hudson Sports Complex. There's a good header, and Mukuruva able to play it off the forehead of Bledi Bardic to get another fine ball threaded by a goalie. Yep, and we see Mukuruva is very aggressive. He's off his line. He's looking because he knows his defenders. They're pushed way up the field. That ball over the top is going to be dangerous all night long. And for Bardic, again, uh, just a little unfortunate right now from the Cosmos, but if Michigan is going to continue to play, pushing their defenders way up the field and Mukarova way off his line like that, that ball over the top is going to be dangerous all night long. That's Candela again shaking up for the Cosmos. Born in Columbia, grew up in Weston, Florida in his first year with New York. Coming over from the USL's Charleston Battery in the USL's Championship Division. The Michigan Stars in their second full year as a club sale. Last year they were here in September. You and I were on the broadcast and George Yunchai at the time was both the owner and the head coach. Kind of had a mix of, in year one, a mix of pros and then a number of guys that were just uh, on the verge of maybe breaking through to the next level. Well, he went out, particularly in the free agent market, and added some quality talents and brought back about five players. 
and certainly an eye-opening win to handle Chattanooga in the first game. And they have also been together for so long. Back in the spring, Yun Chai went out and bought about a 35-unit a building to house this team. As we'll get a corner, or check that, it's going to go back to a goal kick for Mukuruva, but but the Michigan Stars had the opportunity to be in their own bubble. Yep, we take a look here. Galvao certainly thought that should have been a corner kick there. We'll see who it touches last. I think the referee might have gotten that one right as the defender. Momensa just kind of shields Galvao out of bounds. Uh, you mentioned, Ralph, I think there's three starters from the game that we did last year here in Members Cup. Uh, Cosmos played Michigan last year twice in the Members Cup, once, once in, uh, in Michigan and once here. Won both of those matches 2-0. Uh, but this is a completely different team, as you mentioned. The talent level on Michigan Stars is, is much higher this year than we saw uh, just about a year ago uh, during Members Cup action. And, but the, the qualities of the team is similar. I just think they're a better organization right now. They've got good defenders. They've got a lot of size. I mean, there's six-footers all over the field for Michigan Stars. Uh, and they've got great fitness. You were about to mention they've, they've been together a long time. They have had an opportunity to try to put these pieces together, maybe a little bit more than some groups so far this year. And I think you're going to see a team that works really hard. That's what we saw last year, competes for 90 minutes and uh, makes it tough to play against. And I think you'll see that again this year, but maybe even with a little bit more quality on the field. And it all started back in January as George Yunchai had the team spend nearly four weeks down in Bradenton, Florida, preparing for the upcoming season. So they were ready to go, and then, of course, the world goes on pause. And then purchasing the building with over 30 rooms, they had a huge kitchen, like their own campus back in March and April, and the team lived there and made it their own. And it started with a lot of running before they were able to go out and that's a ba dangerous bouncing ball. Mukuruva, again, well out, has to head it twice. Well, Tatenda Mukuruva, just thinking about him from a year ago, Sal, but he is already playing even further at the top of his box. Well, again, it, you're going to get a lot of positive plays like that with this aggressive style, but you're also going to get opportunities that we've seen already twice where he's off his line, a little bit susceptible for that ball over the top. That header that we saw from Bardic, but it's a very high line from the Michigan Stars. Their defense is very high up the field. They're not playing an offside trap, but you might see the Cosmos offsides at times, uh, offside at times if they're not uh, aware of that high line. But if, if the defense is going to play that way, the goalkeeper, Mkorova, has to absolutely play the way he is. And you can see there's nothing but confidence coming from that player right now. Yeah, Tatenda Mkorova. Some flirtation last year from Atlanta United and the MLS. They reached out to Michigan during the second game last year in the spring to potentially bring him on for a tryout or a loan. And Mukuruva, who's been a part of the Zimbabwe national program for many years, still just 24 years old, and decided to stay in the U.S., particularly once the pandemic hit, to continue through 2020. That's played away by Devin Amu Mensa. Cosmos, Emmanuel Sembroni. Conrad Pleva, Seton Hall product, Wallington, New Jersey. Sembroni, another long ball. Bardic, what a nice touch, Darwin Espinal. Espinal plays the ball back in, back heeled, and it's tucked in. Flag it up. is offsides. Wave it off for Bledy Bardich. Ball played through by Darwin Espinal. Yeah, and there was a long ball before that played to Espinal over the top, and you could see Bardich's a step offside. But a nice little flick there, and Korova had to protect the near post, had to kind of wait for that cross, and that's always puts the goalkeeper kind of in no man's land there. Is it going to be a cross that I have to come and get? Is there going to be a deflection on the play? You saw the little bit of a touch from Bardic. It was a nice finish to the far post, but he was just offside. Cork again to command. And tonight has a little something extra 
from a pair of Cosmos. Ansi Ugoli, 37-year-old captain of the Albanian national team. Bledi Bardic from Montenegro. Well, George Yunchai and the Yunchai family that own the Michigan Stars. Of course, Steven Yunchai, the talented left forward. It was a year ago that George Yunchai, who has known about Ansi Ugoli, there is a goalie, 13. He's been such a national figure. Remember, Albania, such a small country but someone that has done so much for that country's soccer program. And George Yunchai had never gotten a chance to meet Ansi Agoli. So they exchanged pleasantries last year, meeting for the first time, a cup of coffee. Ansi gave George a jersey. And they were especially looking forward to playing well against one another tonight. Amu Mensah. Another long ball trying to drive out Bernito. And Tomas Bernito asking for the foul. And Sal, that's already another long direct kick in Michigan's first year head coach, Alex Stremmel. 14 years in the Bundesliga. And it was fun catching up with him this week and especially on the field. Main point and takeaway for me he wants much shorter passes and to show off their technical abilities. They got caught playing the ball over the top a little too much against Chattanooga and wants to see his team's technical abilities come out a little bit more through those shorter passes. Yeah, you, you would love to see that. It's, it's, uh, it's a prettier style. It's a nicer game to watch. But also you've got to utilize your strengths. And he's got some speedy guys up top. He's got some wingers who have some pace. He's got guys who can get up over the top. And right now, he's been under a lot of pressure. So how do you relieve pressure sometimes? If you don't have the ball and you're not confident, you're not going to string together t 10 passes to get out of it, sometimes you have to play a long ball to relieve some pressure. And when you've got guys up top who can run a little bit, you know, why not? Andres Chalbad, left back from Venezuela, who has been a midfielder the majority of his soccer career. He's adjusted well. And can he be a factor tonight for Michigan? Cosmos with Pedro Galval. Espinal to try to switch it. Bartic. Well defended Devin Amu Mensa. Center back from Naperville, Illinois. And how the pandemic changed the careers of some of these players. Amu Mensa was in Sweden until March. Came home due to the pandemic with the world shut down and decided to at least finish out this year playing soccer in the USS Bartic. And that ball caroned back off of him and it'll be a deep throw for the Stars. Tonight's game being presented in part by the Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the United States for orthopedics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, how you move is why we're here. Mukuruva, Adu, Cameron Schneider. And even Mukuruva, just the way he rolled the ball out, Sal, very aggressively not worrying about any oncoming traffic. Yeah, and he, you know, you'd love as a defender, you'd love playing with a goalkeeper these days like Kuruva because he eliminates a lot of opportunities by being aggressive off his line. You don't see a lot of goalkeepers necessarily these days. There's a couple at the highest level, Manuel Neuer, of course, uh, that likes to play aggressive off his line, almost like an old time sweeper. But it just eliminates so many dangerous balls that defenders have to defend against, facing their own goal. Not really comfortable in those situations. And due to his aggression and his ability with his feet outside of the box, he eliminates a lot of chances. It doesn't go down as saves, which, you know, I think we have to find a better way to evaluate goalkeepers uh, in those areas. But every time he gets a touch on those, you know, long balls into the box, either with his feet or collecting them with his hands, 
it means that the defenders don't have to deal with uh, some really dangerous players that the Cosmos are throwing at them. Cosmos have had a goal waved off due to an offside. And then another terrific near opportunity from Siobhan John Brown that was sent over the crossbar. Clever and redirects it calmly to Jesse Cork. Candela stays calm under the pressure. Matt Lewis dispossessed and the Michigan Stars had some very good work from Steven Yunchai that stayed all over Lewis and we'll get perhaps the first quality restart for Michigan. And here's where Michigan is going to look to be dangerous. They have a six foot four player out on the field, six two, six one, six three, a lot of size that they can put forward into the box right now for the Cosmos to have to deal with. They haven't had a lot through the run of play in the first 18 minutes here for Michigan, but a great opportunity on a dead ball right now. Steven Yunjai, youngest in the starting 11 for Michigan, just 22. As he plays it in and it carried all the way through, there were some numbers and a window of opportunity before Cork is able to handle. Yeah, flag was up here, uh, AR on our side of the field, Ralph. Had the flag up uh, if, if that did get redirected on goal into the back of the net. Referee probably would have blown the whistle. But what a dangerous, it's a teasing ball there by Yun Chai into a great area over all of the line of defense, bouncing right around the penalty spot. A lot for the goalkeeper to have to think about and manage. Espinal. Throw coming for the Cosmos. Tonight's game also brought to you in part by Mediacom. Experience internet like never before with Extreme, powered by Mediacom. Take your latest technology to the next level with speeds up to one gig. Check out MediacomCable.com for more information. Ralph Pidnarczyk with Sal Rosamelia joining you from Mitchell Field. As we socially distance, happy to bring you this one tonight from Nisa. The National Independent Soccer Association. Start of the four-game abbreviated fall regular season schedule for the Cosmos. Michigan already 1-0 after a late victory last week over a perennial power, both at the NPSL level and now in the NISA level, Chattanooga. Dealt back by Dupre. Cosmos hurried up. Espinal. Espinal chipping, locating Galval. Can he play it? He looked to volley it off the chest, and it was knocked back by the defender. A great ball from Espinal, perfectly over the defender, right to the chest of Galval. Good first touch to himself on the left foot. Michigan Stars defense in a good position there on that shot. And that's just a perfect ball right over the defender. Good first touch off the chest by Galvao and the left footed shot. Looked dangerous, if not for the defender there in a good position. Tomas Bernito. Ball was won by Pleva, settled by the captain Danny Chatel of Clifton, New Jersey. Long time. Cosmo, terrific career in the MLS. Lewis, Bardich, and Bardich will get there with numbers running into Espinal and his shot, and it has to be just tucked away by the keeper, Mukuruva. Bloody Bardich with that power move to get to that ball, and Espinal nearly made it pretty. Yeah, we think about Bardich as a goal scorer, and he is, but here he's a creator for Espinal. Great job around the defender cross into the box and Espinal with a good redirection and Mkurova made a big save. First corner for the Cosmos. They've had four shots. Now the wind is going 
It's a beautiful night, but there is some wind down on the field, and it's going at the back of this kick from a goalie, so he has to be careful not to overhit it. This is his prime territory left-footed player. Bends it in, and Lewis missed the header. Oh, Matt Lewis, an uncontested header. All he needed to put it on frame. Well, it's just some shocking defending there, really, from Michigan Stars, how you can leave Matt Lewis that wide open. Such a good target, such a perfect ball from a goalie, and really Matt Lewis from the six-yard line, right in the center of the goal. He's got to be a little disappointed with himself there. Cosmos have certainly created some great chances in the first quarter of the match here tonight. Lewis, the 2018 Fordham graduate. Terrific career there after coming up with Sporting KC at the academy level, then eventually signed a homegrown contract with the MLS franchise and played for Swope Park in the USL. He's one of the three in the back for the Cosmos. Now this is some of the frustrations that the Cosmos had in the Nisa Cup, is creating a lot of chances but not finishing them as they only scored two goals in the two matches of the Nisa Cup. And one of those was off the great dead ball from Ansia Goli. So through the run of play, wonderful opportunities. Again, a handful already tonight, but nothing on the scoreboard for New York. And in speaking to George Yunshai this week about, he's watched all the games in Nisa, and it, his feeling is that nobody's going to be 100% ready for a while. That uh, everybody's, he thought, kind of coming along and making steps, but uh, this is just going to take some time, and it may be, you know, it may be at the end of August before you really start to see teams where they'd like to be in, in the course of a season with everything that we have dealt with, with the with the stop and start and all the time off as the offsides flag is up. Yeah, and a goalie wanted that ball played much sooner. He was wide open for a while and kind of trying to get the attention there to get that ball served. Even over the top, there was plenty of space behind. And a little frustration there that the goalie didn't get that ball a little sooner. He had tons of room there. Bental. Goni Bental, native of Israel, before coming to the U.S. Amu Mensa as he played that ball forward. Galval. Bental, no outlet, and will give the Cosmos a throw into the 26th minute. Cosmos have had all the chances. The Stars have settled for a decent restart. That was a threatening ball. Nothing to show for it. Manuel Sembroni. Espinal. Vang able to dispossess. Chatella to play it safe through Cork. Bardich was the target. Bental handled. And John Brown had already made the run. Amu Mensa, the intercept. The Michigan Stars trying to settle in. They had jumped out on Chattanooga last week on a goal by Kyle Newell in the sixth minutes. And it lasted that way into the early second half before a PK was called. Chattanooga had tied it. And then Steven Yunchai on a terrific run, a great passing sequence with Newell getting the assist. Yunchai with a terrific finish in the 88th minute as there is Steven Yunchai laying in the first official shot by the Michigan Stars that Cork handles. But it was Yunchai that gave the Stars the big win in the opener of this fall schedule. And that's important for Michigan. New coach, as you said, a lot of new players coming off the Members' Cup last year. 
uh, with a 2-6-2 two, two record. Wasn't a great first season for them, so really important to get started as they did against Chattanooga. Good pressure by the Cosmos up high by Espinal. And they'll force the Stars with a deep throw. You notice there's Andres Chalbad was going with the face shield. All that time together that the Michigan Stars had in their own club bubble two months ago, he ran into a teammate at practice, broke a bone in his face, and he's still going with the plastic face shield. They don't have a left-footed player, Sal, and Chalbad, who's primarily played forward or left midfield, as this is a ball that Mukuruva will go and handle, and Chalbad became I guess the best option in the clubhouse to put it left back. Well, soccer players are, are tough, Ralph, as you know. And with the Coliseum. Soccer the field players I know are tough. And the Coliseum in the distance, it's mm -hmm. hockey playoff mm -hmm. time. You know, mm -hmm. soccer players, hockey players, as mm -hmm. uh, hockey players as tough as they get. Two months though, still wearing the mask. Yeah. That's Bernito and Adu, teammates that made contact with one, one another. And the ball will be pointed in the direction of the Cosmos. Yeah, that looked like it might have gone out off the Cosmos there. A little fortunate they're getting a throw. Galval of Waterbury, Connecticut. Bardich. And Mukaruva, well, he, he certainly enjoys, I think, this style. Sal, where, as you see, look at how far the opposing keeper handles, playing it as if he is a free safety in football and having, uh, essentially, there's no leash on the range he is given. Yeah, he misplayed that one, though. He had plenty of time to just lump that up the field. Ended up giving up a throw-in, which led to that opportunity right there. And that is a goalie that found kind of a half volley that he nearly looped in perfectly. Again, this just comes off the throw-in that Mkurova had to knock out of bounds because I don't think he really played it correctly the whole time. There's no sweat on that shot there really at all from a goalie. But sometimes you got to take the good and good with the bad with uh, Mkurova's style. Cosmos forced to turn over. Candela couldn't get on to the end of it. Adu, Bernito to bring it down. And a shove from behind on Sebastian Dupre. Joseph Adu from Philadelphia by way of Liberia. Abrams, nice ball win to Vang. Space for Chalban. Steven Yunjan. And that's Galval that will win it off of him. Into the 32nd minute, the New York Cosmos are proud to welcome Boda Bar as a new sponsor. Check out the inspired Roman cuisine at Boda Bar on Broadway in Astoria. Boda Bar, check them out. B-O-T-T-E Bar, Boda Bar on Broadway in Astoria. A little well, surprise they're, they're doing water breaks tonight. I mean, it's an absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous, gorgeous summer night here. Mm -hmm. Not too far from the water. The breeze is absolutely spectacular. So are the pause of the action with the Cosmos and the Michigan Stars even up again for the Cosmos. This is game one of four for Michigan, game two of four. After that, it's still yet to be announced exactly 
how the playoff format for the fall schedule will end up, but uh, we are anticipating some sort of a, some sort of a, a championship portion of the fall season, and then that will lead into the 2021 spring schedule. Cosmo still looking for their first victory since the season restarted. Also like to thank Ivy Rehab, proud sponsor of the New York Cosmos for 2020. For exceptional care and personalized treatment, visit Ivy Rehab on Merrick Avenue in Lynbrook on Long Island. So we'll have some injury time added to this first half with this water break, but comfortable conditions for the Cosmos and the Michigan Stars tonight. The Stars bringing in virtually a brand new team off of 2019 that was just laying down the foundation, including a terrific coaching staff, Alex Stremmel being brought over from Germany after 14 years, or I should say 19 years playing as a defender and a midfielder in the German game. Nearly 160 appearances with Stuttgart of the Bundesliga, then coached nine years at lower division German clubs. And of course the German system that George Yunchai uh, especially marveled at, how well organized they, they typically are in their upbringing in terms of shape and player development. John Brown with a nice ball for Chatella. Lays it ahead for Bardic, offsides. But a nice interplay there off the sideline. Yep, and it looked like another half step offside from Bardic. Nice combination play in the center third of the field there. And you see if you just time this right. Yep, and he's off. Assistant referee on that far side of the field in perfect position. Got that one right again. But you could see if they don't time it right, Michigan, that aggressive front line very high up the field. That's an opportunity there for a 40-yard breakaway for Bardic if the timing is just a little bit better. And the Stars came in as looking at the roster that they would be a very good countering team this year. Now, they're a little short-handed in terms of personnel tonight. Kyle Newell not in the starting lineup. Alexander Satrustegui may not play either, forward from Spain. Galvao. John Brown to switch it. A goalie. Sembroni. High pressure by Vang. Espinal nearly on the same page with Bardic. Amu Mensa. Well, the Stars quite comfortable playing it back to Tatenda Mukuruva. Coming up at the half, Sal, you had a chance to do a Zoom call with Cosmos head coach Carlos Mendez. And then we'll do some highlights and stats from this opening half. That's coming up at the break. Here from Mitchell Field tonight in Uniondale. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, Carlos had a lot to say. It was a good chat, talked about the couple of matches uh, that they've had so far in Nisa Cup and also kind of what he's expecting for the team moving forward in the fall season and beyond and even some of the, uh, some of the newer players that we haven't seen just yet uh, get into the first two matches or so far here tonight, but some of the exciting uh, younger players that the Cosmos have brought into the club. And we could see he is dressed tonight Will we see the debut of Leo Guarino tonight? And remember that name, just 17 years old, Guarino had been training with NYCFC's U19 team. Galval, good ball, Bardic. And it's Adu able to win the header. And Guarino 
only became a free agent only because NYCFC decided to disband their U19 reserves. You know, it's always been a trade of the cosmos, you know, going back to the 70s. They always have young players, great players, that they're adding into the system with a mix of experienced veterans, and that's what we're seeing with this 2020 version as well. Some players that have been here a few years, the captains Danny Sotella, you know, some really big names that the Cosmos have had now for, for a while, but they're also always looking to bring in fresh, young, good players, uh, and it's been uh, a lot of depth. You know, these are the qualities of the New York Cosmos that we've come to know uh, for a very long time. And they're also local players, too, players that, uh, that continue the sense of community uh, within a, a soccer club that, that keeps the fans interested. Cosmos were called off sides as a goalie was ahead of the play. So Mukuruva. Go, go, go. And they'll get Tomas Bernito on the foul, and he's wondering why it's not on Lewis for climbing the ladder on his back. Well, because it was offside, that's why. So he, he, if it was a foul called against him, I could see him having that reaction. He didn't realize he was in an offside position when that ball was first played forward. He was a little lazy getting back. And then when he touched it, he's offside. Espinal on the same page there with Galval, just could not deliver the pass. These are those ones that are just a little bit off now. We saw the Cosmos connect on a couple of those early. Siobhan John Brown had a great opportunity, as well as Pedro Galvao on some of those balls over the top behind the defenders. The last couple of times, they've been just a little off. First 20 minutes were really, really good from New York in the last 19, maybe not so much. Michigan has done a nice job kind of withstanding that early pressure, not giving up a goal. And now getting a little bit more organized defensively, aware of kind of how the Cosmos are trying to play. Now the Cosmos have to change it up. They had those great opportunities over the top early against an aggressive line. And now they've backed off a little bit. Now the Cosmos have to find some gaps behind the midfielders, in front of the defenders, and try to exploit Michigan that way. And that's a goalie who, again, started in an offside position, tried to curl back. And, and the Cosmos, after having a strong flow through that first 10 minutes or so, Sal, have not been able to recapture that. Well, with that high line and the aggressive line going forward, you have to play that ball early. If you're going to play the long ball, it has to come early before they can get themselves, that, that defensive back four can get themselves pushed up the field. And you saw again, a goalie twice now has been frustrated. He's got room there. He's got space to try to exploit, but he wants the early service. Vang. Stepped into. And a fine step forward by Goni Bental. Bang down the middle. And in the reach of Sebastian Dupre. The challenge from Chatella. Last touched by the Cosmos. Goalie plays that ball calmly off the chest, world class. Chatella, Galvao and had thoughts about volleying it, and that might have been the better of it. In that case, instead, he plays it wide. Yeah, I think he was trying at the last second. He saw Siobhan John Brown square of him wide open in the center of the goal again, and I think he was kind of mixed-minded there he thought maybe he's going to hit it first time himself towards goal and at the last second i think he saw siobhan john brown out of the corner of his eyes was wide open and maybe tried to play it across to him and just again this is that final touch that we've seen from the cosmos in the two games in the uh, nisa cup that's just a little bit off not quite mid-season form just yet and tonight kind of the same thing you like the thoughts you like the ideas you like the chances that they are creating it's that final touch gets a little bit better now they are going to be really difficult to handle. There's just attacking players and solid players all over the field for New York. 
And Galvao is a natural left-footed player, Sal, but as Carlos Mendez is the last two years very comfortable playing him as a right back, but tonight Galvao is making runs that he normally has not made a lot in his Cosmos career. It's right midfield to right back. It, it, it's maybe 10, 15 yards where you're starting, but the runs have great length. Yun Shai. That's Amu Mensa, the center back making the overlapping run. And then Michigan trying to get themselves back on side. Lewis trying to track it in the air. Pressure by Dupre. Cork. And Galval was stepped in too late. Yeah, that was a dangerous ball there, and hopefully Galval will be okay. But that's, you know, you delay now. The referees are told to delay raising the flag on offside. Michigan had three players in an offside position. I think Matt Lewis was kind of expecting the flag to go up. It didn't. He was forced to then play the ball. Maybe not great communication between him and Jesse Cork in the goal. And all of a sudden now, Michigan creates a half chance, maybe you get a corner kick out of it. I still think at times the assistant referee would be right to raise the flag, even though the player has given up on it, he's, he's given himself up, but then once the Cosmo player decides he has to play it, now he's under pressure. And at times that's just that new rule there is just a, it's not new anymore, but the new interpretation is just a little bit unfair to defenders. Injury-wise as well, just forget that part of it. Defenders are forced to then continue to work and sprint and, and chase after balls until the player becomes active in the play and then the flag goes up. But what happens if something happens in the meantime? Vang. Adu. Spent most of last year as a starting center back, playing on the right tonight. Bental under pressure. Bernito. And Candela took it off of his feet. And then the late whistle, and we could have our first card coming out. This will be Tomas Bernito. He was frustrated earlier, and perhaps that went into this hard challenge. On uh, Emmanuel Sembroni. Yeah, I'm not sure it was frustration there. He's just stretching for a ball. He really doesn't have a chance to try to win. He gives it up there, maybe a little frustration. Now comes in very hard with a stiff leg. His studs up in the air. Absolutely justified the yellow in that situation. Bernino, 22 years old, just finished up from Division II Bellarmine in Tennessee after a great career there, native of Santiago, Chile. We're into injury time. We had the water break, and the word is it'll be four minutes of injury time. Adu with some more numbers forward. Second ball as Bernito on the back of Sembroni. Adu for James Abraham, native of England. Chatella stepping into him. Chalbad. Steven Yunchai. As Yunchai settles it, now looks to cross it as he had Bernito inside. Adu, however, the offside's flag is up. Again, these Michigan players are in an offside position when the ball is played. They come back and receive it, and it appears as if they're onside, but it was when the ball was played, they're a half step behind. 
Cosmos defenders, the back three, recognizing that, stepping forward at the proper oper proper time to uh, to catch the Michigan star player in an offside position. Vang. Bartich to check back and win possession again for the Cosmos. Galval to Lewis. As the Cosmos continue to try to probe and find an opening, find the perfect through ball. Against the Michigan Stars tonight, who come in 1 0 after a great victory up in Fraser, Michigan, last weekend against Chattanooga. And New York has become almost too reliant now. That long ball over the top was, was very effective in the first 20 minutes, created some really dangerous opportunities. Now, every time a defender on New York puts their head down to play that long ball, Michigan's back line is dropping off and then able to come forward and win those head balls. It's, uh, New York has to find a different way. They've got to start making some connections now through the midfield to continue to draw Michigan out because every time now New York wants to go over the top, uh, the defenders are reading it. They're already starting to run two, three steps backward, and they are doing a nice job. They've made a good adjustment here. They were vulnerable in the first 20 minutes. And that Cosmos success primarily came through Ansia Goli and Darwin Espinal. And not many touches for either over the last nearly 20 minutes. James Abraham, great story, 26 years old, quit his full-time job at a Michigan factory back in January to pursue professional soccer full-time. He was playing for the Stars last year, but he would miss games due to travel for work and quality control. First player signed by the Michigan Stars and as a club by George Yunshai back in December of 2018 after George saw him playing rec league adult soccer. So you never know who's watching. We hope you stay with us. We've got a lot more to show you, including Sal's chat with Cosmos head coach Carlos Mendez coming up at the break, as well as some highlights and stats. Scoreless at the break, the Cosmos and the Michigan Stars. It's National Independent Soccer Association action tonight from Uniondale, New York. We're back with more. No score of the Cosmos and the Michigan Stars tonight in NISA action. Earlier this week, my partner Sal Rosamilia had a chance to do a Zoom call, socially distancing, with New York Cosmos head coach Carlos Mendez to catch up about the season through the Independence Cup and then leading into this abbreviated fall schedule. 
Carlos, your club is coming off of two matches in the Independent Cup, both draws, 1-1 with New Amsterdam uh, in that opening match, and then your second match, uh, also a 1-1 draw. What were some of the positives uh, you can pull away from those first two matches? I think, uh, obviously, getting, getting guys minutes, and, and it was the first uh, real competition in a long time for, for, for the players. So, you know, we went into it, obviously, looking to, to, try, to try to get everybody a rotation in minutes, and that was very, very important. Uh, there were good moments for us. I thought at times we were very, very good during both games, uh, but also at, at times lacked. And I think we dropped our level and obviously given up two uh, goals later on in the game. Uh, it was disappointing. So it's something that we have to correct and, and learn from and, and be ready now to, to improve during uh, league play. Beside the two um, late goals in each match, uh, which led to the draws, you said those are things you need to, to try to work on. Is there anything else that you've uh, gathered from those, those first two matches that you feel you put into, uh, into training this week and even beyond as you continue in the fall season? Yeah, I think uh, just mentality. At times, again, uh, you, we lacked a bit of mentality in just putting together a consistent game. If you're going to win in this league, uh, there, there are no easy matches. You have to, you have to come with the right mentality and, and make sure that you're, you do the, the little things and the small things well, and you do it 90 minutes plus, and that'll get you the result. And uh, obviously, uh, we didn't do that through the preseason or in, in the Independent Cup, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that I think we've been, been touching on that and obviously looking at where we can improve. But uh, staying positive and, and excited to get going now with, uh, with our league play. Uh, you have uh, you have recently added some new players to the roster, and I'm guessing you have some flexibility and potential to uh, to continue to add. Would you identify one particular ad, uh, one particular position um, that you might feel that you're you're looking to add some talent to uh, as we move forward? Uh, I think you know, we're we're, hap we're happy with the group we have. Obviously, we have to continue to to improve, and and we have a good core. I think of uh, obviously the, the veterans and the guys from last year that understand and uh, and, and know what this club is about and what we expect. So I think having a lot of those guys back, of, of course, like Danny and and Zambroni and and even uh, younger players, Matt Lewis, who I thought was very good for us last year. You know, having them back and having that understanding, and then we're excited about some of the the young players that we brought in. Uh, guys like uh, Gio and uh, obviously even adding some more experience in the back like Conrad. All, all these are a good mix, but it'll take some time. And, and we've been kind of focusing on making sure that we, we find the right balance and that we're ready to go. So, um, like I said, excited about the group overall. And I think in every area right now, we have enough quality where if we uh, continue to, to improve and play our best, that we'll have a good opportunity to win. Uh, all teams right now and, and everybody really uh, has been dealing with a lot of stuff in, in 2020 with the pandemic and everything that goes along with it. But how has that affected how you can train, how you prepare for training? How has the players' uh, outlook on all of that uh, gone so far for you? Well, I think everybody's uh, happy, excited to be back and grateful. Uh, there, there's been a lot of uncertainty. It's a very difficult year for, for everybody, of course, uh, off the field and there's a lot going on so I think in terms of I know as a staff and players uh, just to have the opportunity to be back and playing uh, everybody was 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 buzzing and excited about I think in terms of how we've approached everything you know just in a normal preseason I think they've had more time off than than they usually do and, and coming into it and I think you have to take that into account and try to make sure that uh you know, when, you, when you're building and when we started, uh, you know, the first couple of weeks that we, we made sure that we can overload right away. And, uh, but now we're, we're in a good place. And I think they, they've been working very hard. Uh, they've been pushing themselves. And, and now we're, we're ready for, for the season and excited it's here. Who might we uh, be surprised about that we haven't seen in the past? You mentioned, obviously, uh, some of the more experienced players, the names that we've come to, uh, to enjoy watching in the last couple of seasons with the Cosmos. But is there a new player, somebody that didn't get a bunch of minutes in the Independent Cup that you can see uh, being an impactful player for the club in the fall? Uh, I think uh, we, we have a few. I mean, Gio, I think, is an exciting young player. I think he's, he's, you know, he's still coming into understanding the tactical side of the professional game, and, and he's going to have an opportunity to grow. But uh, very, very exciting on attack and end. He's, he's a clever player who can – you know, who can play up top, but also come underneath comfortable on the ball. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be uh, pushing to see what, what he can give us. And in terms of, I think, if, if he has the right mentality, we'll, we'll have a long, successful career. 
you know, adding also not just young guys, but guys like Andy Luban, who's, uh, you know, been, been a pro for a long time. He's an outside position player. He's versatile. He can get up and down the field. So I think he'll, he'll give us another dimension. And, uh, and again, also just opportunities for guys like uh, Jesse now stepping in, who was with us last year and, and has an opportunity to be our, our number one. I think we're very competitive at the goalkeeper position, but he, he's done well through preseason and seeing uh, how we can now step up that way. So, uh, again, it, it'll be a good mix. I think guys will, will get their, their chances and uh, also excited to see, I think, guys like Siobhan have been excellent through preseason. He's been very, very dangerous, and uh, he's, he's grown and taken steps from, from last year. And if he continues on our route, I think he's going to be a handful and, and he'll be, have a successful season. What can the supporters expect, not just from your club, from the Cosmos, but from the league uh, in the fall season? Well, for, from us as a team, that, that we're going to give 100%, and, and obviously they deserve that. So uh, we're looking to, to obviously win a championship, and, and we're, that's, that's, that's the ultimate goal. But it's, it's one game at a time, but we're going to be a team that is going to leave everything on the field uh, and, and try to have the, the right mentality, and, and that's the most important thing. And I think if, if we do that, we'll, we'll have a very good chance. But I think in terms of just playing uh, the way we normally play, but just being a little bit more, uh, a little bit more difficult and bringing – a little bit more excitement in the final third because for me through preseason again we've done some things well but we had just have to be a little bit more clinical a little bit more attack minded in those areas and, and hungrier and if we do that I think we'll be an exciting team to watch. Carlos thank you so much for your time all the best to you to the Cosmos uh, in the fall season thank you. Thank you. No score at the half. Cosmos and the Michigan Stars from Nisa action tonight. All right, Sal, you spoke to Carlos. How about the way it played out on the field from what he was hoping for in the first half? Yeah, kind of exactly the way the interview there. You know, he talked about some of the things that they re did really well in the first two matches, and we saw some of that tonight. Creating a lot of chances, having possession, defending really solidly in the back. Good goalkeeping from Jesse Cork, even though he's not very busy. But some of the things that he mentioned needed to work on after those couple of Nisa Cup games is being a little bit more clinical in their finishing. And we're also seeing that tonight. Some really good opportunities, some no goals just yet came about. And uh, hopefully for New York, that changes in the second half. We'll show you those highlights when we come back. The Cosmos and the Michigan Stars scoreless at the brink. To all our Mediacom customers, thank you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us to keep your family connected. We'll do whatever it takes. Yep, we got you. Thank you so much for being patient and your support. You all are the reason that we do what we do and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. We appreciate you and please stay safe. Thank you for being a part of our Mediacom family. You're the best. Thank you. I set you free. I told you. New York Cosmos and the Michigan Stars scoreless at the break from NISA action tonight. The National Independent Soccer Association. We're in Uniondale, New York. We'll step out and bring back halftime highlights and stats. The Cosmos and the Stars are scoreless.
all our Mediacom customers. Thank you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us to keep your family connected. We'll do whatever it takes. Yep, we got you. Thank you so much for being patient and your support. You all are the reason that we do what we do and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. We appreciate you and please stay safe. Thank you for being a part of our Mediacom family. You're the best. Thank you. So the Cosmos and the Michigan Stars still deadlocked. Ralph Bidnarchik with Sal Rosamilia welcoming you back to Mitchell Field in Uniondale, New York. We're about 45 minutes east of Manhattan. Let's look through our first half highlights in Sal, first 10 minutes, it looked like the Cosmos were on the verge of breaking through. What a nice ball, Ansi a goalie, and Siobhan John Brown had the look. Yeah, it was a great first touch from Siobhan John Brown, the second touch just over the bar. Header here from Bartage. We saw this early and often from New York. High defensive line by Michigan. That was the best save of the half by either goalkeeper Ukaruva with the save off an Espinal and that one there. Just put on a platter by a goalie and Lewis misses the target from in close and the only real chance that a lot of the steam was taken off that deflected on its way in. Easy save for Jesse Cork. Cosmos dominated as we can see the stats will bear that out for sure. Some really good chances, quality chances, one big save from Mukaruva. But when you look at the scoreboard, this is kind of where the Cosmos have been so far this season. Struggling a little bit to get that final touch in the back of the net. And Michigan Stars have done well to keep this scoreless right now at the half. The Stars looking to go to 2-0 and in this fall regular season schedule. The Cosmos playing their opener. Second half coming up from Uniondale on the island. Welcome to Mitchell Field in Uniondale, New York. our Mediacom customers. Thank you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us to keep your family connected. We'll do whatever it takes. Yep, we got you. Thank you so much for being patient and your support. You all are the reason that we do what we do and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. We appreciate you and please stay safe. Thank you for being a part of our Mediacom family. You're the best. Thank you. I set you free. I told you you could. About to start the second half, Ralph Bidnarchik with Sal Rosamilia, New York Cosmos and Michigan Stars scoreless in NISA action, National Independent Soccer Association. Well, on the left, Alex Stremmel, his first trip to the island as head coach of the Michigan Stars. On the right, George Yunchai, owner and assistant coach, general manager, who created this club last year, and the Michigan staff hierarchy. Well, what do you think for Alex Stremmel? A couple of key things, of course, his high press changed, and he was hoping to see his players' technical abilities come out a little bit more off of game one to game two with shorter passes. Yeah, you would hope that, but really, realistically, they're not going to have teams are not going to come to New York and outpossess the Cosmos. So you have to understand you're going to lose the possession battle. Uh, most likely, you're going to defend more often than you're going to attack. And I think he's got to be happy with the adjustments that his defense made handling it the cosmos were really effective as we saw in the highlights had some great chances but most of those came in the first 25 minutes of the match now michigan how are they going to get something more than a 0-0 draw out of this game tonight they have to be willing to play like the cosmos did direct and over the top at times they're not going to most likely string 10 15 passes together from the back through the middle third of the field into the final third and score a wonderful goal if they can great but I think some other chances and, and a chance to, to put the Cosmos under some pressure, they've got to relieve the pressure that they've been under with a long ball. They've got to get some more possession in the final third, see if they can create some, some dangerous uh, opportunities where maybe a foul comes off of it because they have great size that they can throw into the box on corner kicks and restarts. So 
That's how they're going to get something out of the game offensively. But I think Alex Stremmel will be extremely happy if they can get away with a draw here. They won their opening match. It's only a four-game fall season. Any team that can go into New York and come away with points from the New York Cosmos on the road, yeah, I mean, they've got to feel great about that. So, um, you know, I think he's got to be really happy the way it went, especially the way the early part of the game went. It looked like New York was going to get a goal in that first half. They didn't. You see Michigan's the only team with points so far, but if they can go into New York, come away with, uh, with a draw here, anything more than that, I mean, he'd be thrilled. But I think if you said, hey, 0-0 zero, zero at half before the game, will you take it, coach? He would say, absolutely. But, you know, they haven't been effective going forward. They haven't had possession in the final third uh, against the Cosmos defense. You know, how are they going to get that? If, if I'm talking to that team there, I'm going to say, okay, maybe not likely trying to string together passes through the midfield. Cosmos have Danny Chattel in the midfield, some other strong players, obviously. You know, more likely, you know, maybe we can get over the, the defenders of New York. Maybe we can exploit some space because Cosmos are pushed forward often in that first half. Uh, and maybe that's a way we can create some opportunities here the second half. But you know, right now, I think he's got to be really, really kind of kind of happy with, uh, with how the first 45 minutes went for his club. Then for Carlos Mendez, I'll start here, Sal. If, uh, does he consider perhaps changing shape at all to, to combat that high press, or is it just a matter of executing things and, and not having to change much, but it's just more precision to complete what they've already been doing well? Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything to change. It's just maybe change up a little bit. Become It became too predictable in the last 15, 20 minutes of that first half. If they're going to play over the top, it has to be early. There were some other opportunities where Anciagoli was wide open and wanted an early service, two times specifically that I can remember, where he was looking for it, he was eager to get it, he wanted it early, it didn't come, and the offside flag went. Finally, when the, the ball was played, uh, it was a little bit too late, and the offside flag went up both times. So, uh, But I think they've got to just try to be unpredictable. I like the three in the back. There's no reason. Uh, Michigan hasn't created anything, so there's no reason to to change the back line and maybe add another defender in the back. And I like, you know, a goalie's going to get up and down the left side no matter what. Maybe New York has to try a little bit more on the right side of the field just to become uh, less predictable than they've been. And then also beside, you know, they've got to get the midfield into the game a little bit more. Vincenzo Candela has to get more opportunities on the ball. Jatella will for sure, uh, but they have to get Espinal and Candela a little bit more involved in the midfield. Uh, and, and then I think that's going to free up some spaces up top for uh, for Bloody Bartage. In terms of restarts, the Cosmos, within all the possession that they typically have enjoyed uh, with this group, there has not been a restart aside from a corner, but nothing in the vicinity of 40 yards and in. But certainly you have to give credit to the Michigan Stars for doing that. And then conversely, Michigan had, had a restart from about 30 yards out that they were not able to create any danger out of yeah well the discipline defending you know and you expect that from coach Stremmel demanding it from his players the referee has also had uh, you know uh, a good first half but but has not called a lot of fouls in that first half either uh, the one restart we did see from Ansi Agoli was the corner kick didn't come off a foul obviously but the one corner kick New York had in that first half was it was a really dangerous chance for Matt Lewis wide open with the header on the six the Cosmos left to right in the second half and indeed the Cosmos do start with three in the back a three four three we can call it or a three five two with Darwin Espinal essentially playing a number 10 spot as the center attacking mid Siobhan John Brown and as he leans into, he draws the call. Devin Amu Mensa was trying to fight through Siobhan John Brown. Let's get a good look. Yeah, a little off balance there the whole time by Siobhan John Brown, but, but grabbing his arm and tugging it a little bit the whole time, you're going to get that call. This is the perfect spot on the field for Ansi Agoli with the left foot. The wall is going to cover the near post. That far post is going to be open 
uh, for a, a shooting opportunity. And with the left foot here from Ansi Agoli, uh, well, and now he's walking away from it. So what do I know? Hmm. I thought that was set up perfectly for a left-footed shot. Well, the Cosmos, as we talked just a moment ago, had no quality restarts. Here's one early. It's Galvao, and he drives it, and Bukuruva got a piece of it. Remember, Galvao, he's another talented left footer, and it's him instead of a goalie. And it's perfectly placed. I mean, the, the uh, Mukarova is covering the far post as he should. He's trusting his wall to make that play, but it's a perfectly placed free kick from Pedro Galvao. And Mukarova has to take a, a jab step over to his left and then full extension to keep this game scoreless. Great opportunity. And Galvao was absolutely right to, uh, to be on that ball. Couldn't hit it any better. Got it over the wall, got it under the crossbar. And if not for a great save from Mukarova, Cosmos would be up here early in the second half. Darwin Espinal ensuing corner in. It's a waste of chance. The wind is going against him in his face. So the Cosmos come away with nothing in the first two minutes of the second half. Yeah, at times it's calm down on the field, and then at times the, 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 the wind does start getting whippy down there and a little bit strong, but still no excuse from a player, the quality of Darwin Espinal to waste a corner kick there. Espinal nearly threaded the needle, a ball for Siobhan John Brown, and Ben Tall for Michigan plays it out. Third corner for the Cosmos. Can this one be more threatening? Espinal will have the chance for redemption. Better ball. And he overshoots Matt Lewis. As we showed you the highlights at the break, Matt Lewis has the game's best scoring chance out of a good handful for New York. Yeah, you said the, the first corner kick from Espinal was into the wind and it went out of bounds. That one there on the opposite side, obviously with the wind on his, at his back and he overcooked it just a little. Cork will play it long. Galvao and out of his reach. Yeah, that's a little atypical from the Cosmos, Sal. And many times it's the goalie playing it flat and having a midfielder check back for the ball and begin possession. Well, it's early. It's only the third match. And again, opportunities to train, get this group together on a consistent basis. Just hasn't quite been there. Not making excuses for New York. It's just the reality of the situation. And these are players that have a history of being really quality players at this level. And I expect that they will be again as they start to get more and more matches under their belt, which they're going to be playing a lot of games in the next few weeks, both of these squads. Yep, for the Cosmos after this, they will return to the Hudson Sports Complex up in Warwick, New York. That's the temporary home of New Amsterdam, new club in Nisa this year. They had just met August 2nd. Ball outside, Steven Ujain. As he played it across, he was looking for Schneider, the right forward making the run. Vang tried to win it, and John Brown getting the return from a goalie. Well, Yun Chai had his eyes to goal, but instead played across. Bental stepping in front of Bartic. And the Stars, the other aspect, Sal through a half plus. They have not had the opportunity to counter. And again, it's it's what what is what is the message coming from? Coach Stremmel, you know, I think their best opportunities to counter when they're under pressure is to look to play direct over the top. They have some pace, you know, that they can try to use. But those opportunities haven't been there. And sometimes you have to credit New York. When they're losing the ball, they still are. If the forwards start providing pressure immediately, then that prevents the time necessary and the space necessary for the defenders to play that long ball over the top. So. You know, there could be a lot of reasons why it hasn't happened just yet for Michigan, but again, they've been perfectly content in the 50, 51st minute being scoreless with New York. 
There's a turnover by Amu Mensah. Espinal, numbers in front, layoff for Bardic. As he played it back for a goalie, that was read very well by Joseph Aidu. Or Aidu, I beg your pardon. Longtime Liberian national teamer in West Africa. Played in Kosovo and Germany. The right back for the Michigan Stars. And we can see clearly now the formation for Michigan is a 4-1-4-1. They're just one up top. It's mostly a crosswind when the wind blows, but if there is more of a directional from one goal to the other, the wind is at the back of the Cosmos right now. So Michigan might feel that they're going to be in under even more possession pressure than they were in the first half, and now we're seeing just really one player up top. And very organized, though. Credit to Michigan Stars. They're defensively, they're, they're cutting down a lot of the spaces, a lot of the gaps that New York's looking to play in the middle third of the field. It's really not a lot of freedom there. Espinal trying to get away from the congestion. Man, the Cosmos can't believe the call wasn't made, and then the foul is Vang taken down. And now Joseph Adu. Well, let's watch here the non-call. Yeah, I'm not sure. Espinal certainly it looked like it, his ankle turned there. That's definitely a foul, finally. But you see Chatella, the captain, is wondering why that call didn't come on Espinal. If we get a chance to see that again, I'm not sure that there was a foul on Espinal. Well, that's Joseph Adu with perhaps some cramping. Meanwhile, a yellow card has been assessed to Cosmos captain Danny yeah, Chatella. That's, that's just a misstep there by Espinosa. That's not a foul on the defender. Then he goes down as well. I think the referee was in a perfect position. Chatella a little farther away. I could see when you're watching that live, I thought, yeah, that must be a foul, just like he did. But then frustration from Chatella on his foul draws him a caution. Well, Joseph Adu was still on the ground as the referee blew the whistle to begin play. Now he's ready. So Mukuruva now into the wind. Matt Lewis releases. And climbing over the back a little bit, Andres Chalbaugh. I think Galvao's going to have more opportunities here in the second half because it's kind of a diagonal win from the far corner towards Galvao's side. And I think you certainly, if you're Michigan, you've got to respect what Ansi Agoli can do on that left side, and it might provide some space here on the right side for Galvao to get forward. What a ball played in by Bart. It's Chatella finding Espinal, and then the runner on the back side. That would have been a goalie with interference running through the middle from John Brown. Best buildup of the night for the Cosmos. Clever back yeah. to Cork. Sorry, Ralph. This is what Michigan's going to have to do. They're going to be under some pressure. There's one player up top. It's, it's the number nine, Tomas Bernito. And he's going to have to do a ton of work. He may not get a lot of touches here in the second half, but Bernito is just going to have to just do doggies from sideline to sideline, put pressure on the defense. Try to nip in from behind, see if he could do something, chase a bunch of balls that he's always going to be the underdog for. But he needs in this, in this, uh, the, the way this game is going here in the second half, he's vital for Michigan to try to get something out of this game. Neither team has made a substitute, which is also interesting with five being available for these regular season games as opposed to the usual three. Of course, those rules decided on by Nisa and as all across the world as soccer has restarted to prevent injury as well as give key players an opportunity to build their conditioning up. Adu finally settles it to the feet of the holding mid, James Abraham. Shatella read it, broke it up. The same for Amu Mensah, stepping in front of John Brown. And 
some good work by Sebastian Dupre. 20 in white, Sebastian Dupre, 21 years old. Came to Michigan in early July, as this will be Cosmos ball. You'll see this is a foul called here. Some hand checking going on. Yeah, but there was a, the, and the reason, it looks like it's going to be a corner there, and that was what Michigan was hoping for, but the assistant referee on the far side of the field, about five seconds prior to that, raised his flag. There was a foul called against Michigan, as you can see where the free kick is taken from Jesse Court. Candela, and he goes down instantly with the defender on his back, Andres Chalbad. So here's another opportunity from this right side of the field from the talented left foot of either Galvao or a goalie for the Cosmos. Yeah, and we'll see who goes here. Galvao, when it was a shooting situation earlier in the half, uh, was on the ball. Now this is definitely a ball that's going to be served into the box. This is a similar spot on the field that a goalie actually scored in the new Amsterdam game. The goalkeeper in that match was guarding near post. A goalie saw that, recognized it, played it over the top to the far post and scored the only goal of that game for New York. We'll see what he has in mind here. And see a goalie. Ball played in. And that was again targeted for Lewis. Well defended by Michigan. That's a great ball by a goalie. Missing the wall totally and just playing it. Always curling, always on goal, always to the near post. Absolute fits for the goalkeeper to try to figure out, am I going to get it? Am I going to punch? Am I going to save? Am I going to hold my line? A goalie again. A, a both times, Goni Bental handles it. A goalie in the follow-up. And the Stars do well. That's Steven Yunshai fouled after he does the work defending. And Espinal's going to get at least a talking to. Tactical foul there. Darwin Espinal missed the game two weeks ago up in Warwick, New York, against New Amsterdam with just some preseason injuries as summer camp restarted. Dynamic playmaking midfielder, 25 years old in his third year with the Cosmos. From the Honduras by way of Miami as we'll get our first substitute now on for the Cosmos. As into the match is Leandro Alves. Margio Alves says he'll also be called 24 year old from Cape Verde off the African coast, west of Senegal. He is a speed forward. Came to the US at the tail end of high school, living in Pawtucket. There is Alvis with Bardic. And the return for Alvis and Mukuruva was waiting for that return. There's Gio, just graduated from Vermont. Last year, selected 62nd overall by DC United in that super draft in the third round, a super career at Vermont, the American striker of the year, two-time first team. Chatella. And as Coach Mendez discussed at halftime, this is one of the players that they're really high on. They're expecting a lot from Gio Alves. And this game really is needing something from New York. And he's maybe the spark uh, that Coach Mendez is hoping he's going to be, but uh, they were really impressed with what he showed prior to getting the game started for the Cosmos. Yunshai. Did Lewis get a touch? Lewis makes sure, and he'll concede a deep throw. Big play there, though, by Matt Lewis, not giving up a corner kick. Again, there's a lot of tall players on the field for Michigan. And a dead ball restart corner kick gives them the opportunity because they can't really do it. Stringing together a bunch of passes, but a, a dead ball corner restart gives them a chance to get some numbers in the box. Here's Zachary Reynolds of Sanford, Florida, 26-year-old. 
that will sub in in the midfield for Sebastian Dupre. Played at Division II West Florida. Legendary coach there, Bill Elliott. Adu. And a little, a little bit extra there on the shove. And a goalie, the way he fell on maybe that aluminum may have hurt himself. Yeah, goalie just trying to shield that ball out of bounds. He does, gets a push right before it goes out. And you're absolutely right, Ralph. That just, that metal bar just jabs yeah, him right, right in the back as he's rolled over. You know, nothing meant by it from the Michigan star player. You see immediately he's trying to help him up and let him know he didn't really mean it. That contact happened inside the field. But when a goalie went to the ground and then just rolled over, that, uh, that bar got a bite out of him. Yeah. That's in a very dangerous spot. And a goalie fortunate that he was able to kind of land away from it or on top of it rather than directly in. So they do call the foul, so Cork will place it outside his area. Cosmos had four to five Chances of quality in the first half. Here in the second, that's kind of been limited to perhaps just two through 17 minutes of play. Both have been off restarts. Yeah, but again, how dangerous the chances are. Really, really quality chances from New York. Now give Mukaruva credit on the free kick from Galvao. That was a top-notch save to keep this game scoreless. So there's not a lack of chances. We've seen it in all three matches for New York, the ability to create good goal scoring opportunities. It's not a great ability right now to finish enough of those. Abraham took over briefly for Michigan. The Stars to toss in. So for Alex Stremel, his Stars have been able to push the game here into the 64th minute. And keeping it level. Bernino off the chest for Yun Chai. Chatella for Lewis. Galval well bottled up as he played it all the way across. Nice step into. By Cameron Schneider. As the Stars still search for their first quality look at goal. Yeah, the referee has had a slow whistle all night long. He's been consistent, hasn't called a lot of fouls, but I think the Cosmo bench is starting to get a little aggravated with some of this after the play when the ball is passed. There's some late challenges. Sembroni was just on the ground there. A goalie as he tried to switch and perhaps looking for Galval. Well, I would imagine that Alex Stremel all week long scouting the Cosmos and especially at the half Certainly everybody on the Stars knows where 13 and green is and what a threat he is to stretch the field. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, but there's others. So it can't just constantly always go through Ogoli as good as he is. You have 11 players on the field for Michigan. You can, if, if, if all you have to worry about is one player getting all of the possession, well, you should be able to defend against that. I think there's opportunities on this side of our near side of the field here, Ralph, with Galvao because the, the field has shifted that way because it's going up the left side with a goalie often. It's defensively, they're shifted towards that half of the field. And if the Cosmos could swing it around and try to play up this right side through Galvao, I think, uh, I think they might find some, some freedom in this match. Cosmos commit the foul. This might be the best chance for Michigan. And that's Chatella that climbed up onto the back of the Michigan player. 
Yep, 35 yards from goal. Again, this is, is way too far out, I would think, uh, for a shooting opportunity here. You never know, but with the height that Michigan can put into the box, this is one I would just chip over the wall, let it fall somewhere around the penalty spot, and just have a bunch of white shirts trying to crash that and see if you can get something messy out of it. Will it be Reynolds, 21? Nope. Steven Yunshai. Yep, as he was shooting to strike, and that ball just sailed on him. And you know he had better intentions that all of a sudden as it got up into the air 15 yards, it took off. You know, I just, I Here's just, a takeaway. A giveaway by the Cosmos. Set him to the feet of Chabad. So the Cosmos turned it over off of a goal kick. Adu. And finally the Cosmos ahead, Bartic. John Brown, oh, and that came up as an inadvertent handball. The official trailing the play, making the call to potentially take away a two-on-two -two run. Yep, Cosmos breaking out. You see not a, not a perfect touch there. That did not hit a hand just yet. Uh, maybe grazed the hand there. The whistle came before that, though, but I'm not sure. That looked like it maybe came off the... Belly of the player. Yun Chai looked for the cross. A goalie. Hasn't made a run in quite a while. Candela. Such a fighter. Carlos Mendes noting his great engine, Vincenzo Candela. But turned over. Abraham. Finding room on the left. Here is Chalbot. Reynolds. Great ball win with the slide by James Abraham. As Bernito trying to bring it down off the chest. Tomas Bernito will. Vang. Reynolds, one more ball. As he tried to lead Brian Vang, but the star is able to connect a series of passes together and build up to a deep throw as we sit in the 69th minute of a scoreless opener for the New York Cosmos in this four game regular season fall schedule. The Michigan Stars 1 0 after. An 88th minute game winning goal from Steven Yunchai last week against Chattanooga as they play their second match. Ball played in, and Yunchai was outside the six. So, better play from the Stars. That was their best picture of the night, that two minute segment. And that's off of Bernito and the Cosmos with another goal kick. Yeah, this is the most sustained amount of time that they've been in the Cosmos half of the field all night. Now, they haven't yet asked Jesse Cork to do anything close to what the Cosmos have, uh, have required from Mukaruva. But this possession and these throw-ins might eventually lead to something for Michigan. This is where the Cosmos have to get control of this game again, tilt the field back in their favor. Get the ball in their offensive half of the field. Michigan is just keeping themselves involved. You know, they're definitely more competitive than we saw them last year in Members' Cup. And as this game is going on, more and more competitive in the match tonight. Yeah, no question. It, it, and credit to the job Michigan did in the offseason free agent market at the NISA level fully professional lineups. The Stars last year had about half and half. As here's Mattia Cella, second sub for the Cosmos. First year pro, played three years at Division II Caldwell College in New Jersey from Rapallo, Italy. He started opening night at New Amsterdam in the Independence Cup with Darwin Espinal being out, limited due to injury, so Cella Comes in replacing Vincenzo Candela. Lewis to turn it back for Conrad Pleva. Sembroni. 
Nice ball for a goalie. And now that long run, Siobhan John Brown to stretch the field. Or check that rather, Gio Alves. Chatella, space in front of him. Back heel as John Brown looked to sprint down Alves. A goalie as he tight ropes that sideline. Clearance from Goni Bental. Cosmos with Chatella. Ball played in, looking for Galval. Mukuruva on a loose ball. Bardic settles. Bardic, it's in. Bloody Bardic, able to collect it outside the box. Mukuruva could not handle it cleanly, colliding with his defender. A dangerous ball that the Cosmos are able to finally see bounce their way. 1 0 New York in the 72nd. Yep, and this is unfortunate for Tenda Mukurova. We'll see here. He comes out, he really doesn't need to. There's a defender right there. There's no reason. We've talked about the aggression all game long from Mukurova, and at many times it was at the benefit uh, of his defenders. There he could have held his line, he could have waited. Defender's in a good position. There's no reason to come out. He collides with his own defender. No chance of a foul there. And then Bloody Bardic has some work to do. Calmly handles it, takes a touch, fixes it, makes sure he can get it in the back of the net. But it's unfortunate for Mukaruva because we've seen him make that play five, six times, coming off his line, helping his defenders out. But that's sometimes you take the good with the bad. And that one right there for Michigan and for Mukaruva. He could have held his line. There's a defender there. That ball is not really dangerous. It's not going to make a connection. Two Michigan players collide, and it falls nicely for Bardic, who had a little bit of work to do. But that will probably be one of the easier goals he can finish this season. Bardic in the 72nd, unassisted. And the Cosmos lead. You know, I, look, you, I like the aggression from Mukarova. You know, he does a lot of positive things because he's confident off his line, because he comes and helps his defenders. You have to, I like the way he plays. But every once in a while, you're going to get that decision wrong. That one there, let the defender deal with it. He really probably wouldn't even have had to. That ball there was two, three yards away from Bardic. It wasn't going to make a connection. Probably could have run through the box, maybe even run out of bounds. And instead, disaster really for Michigan and a fortunate break for New York. Vladdy Bardic making the start tonight as the Cosmos are down two forwards. Told you at the top, Isaac Acuna. Hamstring issue yesterday. Cosmos playing it safe. So he's not in the active 18 tonight. And then again, best wishes to Ali Hassan and his family after losing his father earlier in the week. And he went back home to Weston, Florida. John Brown, as he is tangled up with Amu Mensa. And now the Stars will have to take some chances. Cameron Schneider. And can the Cosmos get the second goal? This is their third match of this 2020 season. One goal each time. And you and I were on the broadcast, Sal, on the, on the MyKuju web stream two weeks ago up in New Amsterdam. Cosmos had to settle for a 1-1 draw after New Amsterdam scored in the 91st minute in injury time. And a game which the Cosmos, granted, was the first game for everybody, of course, coming off the pandemic. But it could have been one where the Cosmos could have easily put that one to bed much sooner. And New Amsterdam, to their credit, hung around and kept that game at one nothing, gave themselves an opportunity. And New York had to settle for a frustrating draw. Yep, and I think that would be something that Carlos Mendez is hoping for in this game. Because in both of those 1-1 ties... Cosmos did have a handful of chances to get that second goal. So far, they haven't had a chance yet here to go up 2-0. But in both of those two previous games, 
they did get they did get enough chances to try to get that second goal and bury the game and it just didn't come so those are the things that Carlos was talking about uh, at halftime in the interview that, uh, they do things well they've done things well they want to continue to do that and that's creating quality chances areas of improvement is finding that second goal being more clinical with the number of chances that they can get and, and then if they can grab one here tonight that'll go a long way with some positive momentum here in the fall season and then same story last Sunday down in Loudoun, Virginia against the Maryland Bobcats as the Cosmos took a 1-0 lead a Bobcat was sent off in the 11th minute with a red card and Maryland was able to get that game even the Cosmos could never get the second they had to settle for a draw playing almost 80 minutes man up Cosmos next sub waiting to come on it'll be Andrew Luban Wake Forest product has it had a terrific career their record-setting career there So Luban is in, and it'll be Galvao that sits. So Luban will come in as the right midfielder or as the right back. Well, this could be a time here where, you know, may maybe there's a tactical change, a formation change now, the final 12, 13 minutes here, trying to manage out a one nothing win. You're bringing in maybe more of a defensive player on that side of the field in Luban than Galvao, who you just took off. You know, maybe at some point, too, they slide to uh, to four in the back or even five in the back. You know, we pull a goalie back a little bit, pull Luban back a little bit if you have to, just to make sure if you don't get that second goal, you don't give up the equalizer. What a nice ball again, a goalie trying to sprint out. B Bardic and Mukuruva. Has had a great radar for reading that ball played in front of him. John Brown. There's a goalie with numbers in front of him as he finds going to go to the Stars here for a throw in the 85th. Fans, the Hospital for Special Surgery is number one in the United States for orthopedics. The Hospital for Special Surgery. How you move is why we're here. And experience internet like never before with extreme. Powered by Mediacom. Take your latest technology to the next level with speeds up to one gig. Check out MediacomCable.com for more information. MediacomCable.com. Not, not a lot of options for Coach Alex Stremel for Michigan when it comes to bringing offensive players off the bench. You mentioned they're a couple short from what we would normally see. We haven't seen Newell, Kyle Newell, or Alex Satrastegi. Yeah, Satrastegui is particularly very, very talented. 26 year old from Spain. His dad, Jesus Satrastegui, was a big time player for the Spanish national team in the early 80s, appearing in the 82 World Cup. Great career. Alexander, his son, had a great career at Southern New Hampshire, Division II program where he was an All-American at that level here in the U.S. And the Stars, even going back to last year, they were able to hang in games. And George Yunshai made it a real point to try to find number nines and number tens. Isn't every coach searching for that, but finding a number nine or a number ten that can impact the game a bit more. All right, so if, if you're looking for one to start the match, that probably means you're not totally confident with what you have to bring in when you're down one nothing late here as they are you see another change more of a defender here coming in again from Michigan Vang will sum off and Dakota Lobsiger will come on in the midfield number two for Michigan so Vang playing nearly 87 minutes at midfield and that's also Perhaps a tough ask, but the Stars felt very comfortable with all the work they did in June. 
in their own bubble, they did perhaps more running than any other season before they could finally get together and play with soccer balls in small groups and build off of that into team, full team functions. Oh, fitness, work rate, determination. That, that you can work will, on right. regardless of a pandemic or not. Yep, and that uh, will tell a lot about a professional player, amateur players as well. You know, what are you doing? You can make excuses or you can try to get yourself better, and that's something that you, every player can do. And it's the quickest way, and it's also an equalizer. You know, if you're working harder than your opponent, even if their skill level is a little bit better, you can equalize that matchup just by being fitter, stronger. Ball over the top. Cork stayed in. Dangerous situation. And Cork has his momentum carry him out beyond the goal line. He is claiming perhaps he was bumped and fouled. But here's a late Michigan corner. Yeah, ball should never bounce defensively in the box. That one's floating too long. It's either got to be maybe a push there by Ben Tal on Sembroni that doesn't get called. And maybe that ball was already out of bounds before Lobsiger pushes Cork to the ground. Bartic prevents the cross. So Ben Tal actually goes from center back to a spot up top. Amu Mensah wins the second ball. But the Stars unable to get James Abraham over. That floating ball there by Michigan into the box that created that corner kick. It's just a ball that somebody's got to win for New York. Got to head that away. Goalkeeper's got to come out off his line and play that. Just a, a, a dangerous ball that led to a corner. John Brown, but a lead for Alvis. And having to be perfect there was Terrence Smith for Michigan. Sembroni, under pressure as he was taken down. Schneider, the right back laying it in. Yoon Chai was there, but instead it is Lewis in the air that wins that key cross. Yeah, that was an important head ball there by Matt Lewis. We talked about the one in the first half. He had a good opportunity to score a goal for New York. That one was maybe even more important. Good win there by Matt Lewis. This one laid off nicely. Adu had a chance at a half volley. And the Stars will settle for a deep throw. Now the official will point the way. Kenneth Rojas pointing the way of the Cosmos. So New York will take this into injury time. And we'll announce to you I would expect three to four minutes minimum added to this. And perhaps additional time as the clock is now stopped with a New York player shaking up. That's bloody Bardich. Six minutes of stoppage time. So for the Stars, they'll still have opportunities. One nothing, New York Cosmos. Goal by Bloody Bardich in the 72nd minute. Amu Mensa as he tried to fight through Shatella, who was asking for a foul. Amu Mensa heading it into play past Steven Yunshai. Schneider, who is now playing in the back after starting the game at right forward. So Smith becoming the lone center back, it appears. That's Chatella that looked to intercept the cross, and he heads it beyond goal. So here is a Michigan Stars corner, 92nd minute. Yeah, man, this should be nine players in the box. We'll see how many.
Now Mukuruva, he's across midfield, the goalie. Mispo played in a head ball, Cork. Kept out of the six. Follow up volley, it carries through. It's pocketed in. Through some traffic and the Michigan Stars scoring in injury time. A shot from the outside that eludes Jesse Cork. One all. Well, I'm not sure if Cork couldn't see it. I mean, there was a line of players, green shirts, white shirts, that that ball went through. An absolute rocket from distance. It's Zach Reynolds that is able to finish it after the chaos in the six. Yeah, and this is just not cleared right. That header is just not done, done good enough. And, and the shot from distance by Zach Reynolds, who was a substitution not long ago. And it's going to go through a bunch of legs. The three green shirts there with an opportunity. Maybe Jesse Cork was screened on the shot because you saw a very late reaction from Cork. That ball wasn't far away from him, very close to his feet. And he seemed like he saw it at the last minute. That's a shot from, from a far distance that Cork reacted late. And you just have to say he probably was screened by his own defenders. There were three green shirts that it seemed like that ball passed right through on its way towards goal. And at the last second, Cork wasn't able to react and keep it out of the net. Still two and a half to three minutes for the Cosmos as a goalie plays it in and he will get New York a corner. Here in injury time, six minutes added and the Stars get one in the 93rd. One all, can the Stars come up with what could be a crucial point on the road in this four game fall schedule? This one, and that head ball is wide. Another wonderful opportunity for New York. Sembroni. Great chance, great ball whipped in towards the near post. Alves, Sembroni rising above everyone and just misses that header to the far post. And Michigan, in each half, has given up almost a wide open header from about six yards away. Remember, it was Matt Lewis in the first half that just missed the target, and Sembroni here in the second half. Two key saves by Tatenda Mukuruva kept the game scoreless for a while. Reynolds in the air on the second ball. Steven Yunjai, now the game winner in the 88th as he looks to lay it off and play Ben Tall forward. Luban ahead. Somewhere inside the final minute, Alvis. Cella. Sembroni out wide, John Brown, it's on side. Then played a penetrating ball through, Mukuruva. Calmly handles, will fall on it to chew up some more clock. Can the Stars close this one out and escape with a point? Abraham to nobody in particular. Final seconds. Yun Chai further to midfield. Kenneth Rojas, our center referee, checking his watch. Sembroni, one more ball in. Mukuruva. He makes it an adventure. That's it. The Michigan Stars come to New York and are able to steal a draw. The Stars scoring in injury time. A 92nd minute goal, Zachary Reynolds and the Stars go back with a point. The Cosmos 
unable to secure a win here at Mitchell Field. After scoring in the 72nd minute, they'll settle for a draw and a point in this four-game schedule. Yep, disappointing draw for the Cosmos. Absolutely, it's what we've seen in their first two matches in that NISA Cup. They get the early lead, they get the lead in the match, up one nothing. aren't able to get the second goal again, give up a, uh, a late tying goal. And uh, we've seen this one before, and we've seen it again here tonight. Credit to Michigan Stars for not giving up on the match, withstanding a lot of pressure, a couple of big saves from Mukaruva, keeping it uh, close for long enough that Michigan was able to get that late goal from Zachary Reynolds from distance. Uh, really struck it well. And you have to say, Michigan's got to be thrilled after two matches to uh, be 1-0-1, one -on -one, four points, top of the table for now. And Coach Carlos Mendez, we see right there, has got to be a little bit disappointed on uh, how this one turned out, a home match coming away with a 1-1 one -one draw. Cosmos in Michigan, one all. The Stars come up with a point and a happy birthday for their owner, George Yunjai, on the field. For our entire crew tonight from Uniondale. This game was produced and directed by Frank Lasquadro and for my partner, Sal Rosamilia. My name is Ralph Binorchik saying so long and good night from Long Island.